Hello, this is Professor Melanie Hildebrandt from the University of West Georgia. Um, this is a lecture for Chapter 1 for our Econ 3402 Business Statistics course. And this will be a very, very brief lecture. Chapter 1 is mainly definitions. And so I feel that you all can go through and read the textbook and understand most of this on your own. So the whole premise of this chapter is just helping us define um, what statistics are and learn a little bit more um, about some definitions that you'll need so that you can use these statistical techniques and methods in the future. Um, we have a lot of data. Data surrounds us. It's everywhere. And so companies spend a lot of time, effort, um, and money now trying to figure out what to do with all of the data. Um, and so that's where statistics comes in. We collect, we organize, we present, we analyze, and we interpret that data to help businesses make better decisions. Um, and so, and again, another definition here, descriptive tech statistics. Um, two important things here on this slide are the difference between a population and a sample. And so population is the entire set of individuals of interest um, or the measurements that we have uh, obtained. And then a sample is just a portion of the population. Sometimes our population is so large that it's either time prohibitive or um, we don't have enough resources in terms of money maybe to gather the data for the entire population. And so we'll use a sample, right, a selection of part of the population um, to help us estimate the population itself. When it comes to our variables, we kind of have these two very broad categories of types of variables, qualitative and quantitative. So again, hopefully you're familiar with these definitions, but if not, um, look through this more closely in the textbook. Qualitative is something that we observe and then record, but it's usually a non-numeric characteristic or attribute that someone might have. So a person's gender, the state in which they reside or were born, what is their eye color, those are all qualitative variables. Quantitative variables um, are reported numerically, and um, so, you know, how much money you have in a, an account, um, the number of people in your family, all of those are quantitative variables. Um, and it, it matters which type of variable we have because it's going to influence the type of work that we can do. And so when we're working with qualitative variables, we might only be able to count the number in each category. So we open up a bag of M&Ms and we count how many red, we count how many green, blue, right? Um, a lot of times the qualitative data that we have, we summarize it in charts and, and using bar graphs. So there's not as much necessarily in-depth um, statistical techniques that we can use sometimes for qualitative. Um, in terms of our quantitative variables, they can be discrete, where they have what we call gaps between our values. And so discrete variables, again, it's something that you would count. And so we would count um, the number of bedrooms in a house. You can't have four and a half bedrooms, you have four or you have five. The number of students in this course, we can't have 36.3, we either have 36 or we have 37 students in the course. Um, continuous variables, on the other hand, are the results typically of measuring something, and so they can have any value within a range, a dollar amount, right, with cents in between, um, the time to drive from Carrollton to Atlanta, et cetera. So here's kind of a summary of our types of variables, qualitative versus quantitative, and again, quantitative can be either discrete or it can be continuous. The last part of the chapter one is gonna talk some about the levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And depending on what type of measurement we have, it's gonna determine the type of statistical analysis that we can perform on our data. Nominal is the basic, it's the lowest level of measurement. And it's typically data that's represented as labels or names, and there's no order to this. It can only be classified and counted. So again, like my m and example earlier, we have 10 reds in the bag. We have um, 12 orange M&Ms, um, but there's really no meaning to those things. 
other than we're just giving um, a total number that we have. Uh, unless you have a preference, I guess, and then that'd be a personal preference on, on how many M&Ms we have of each color. Then we move up a level to the ordinal. So now we have known rankings, but we don't know the magnitude of the differences between them. Um, and so we could rank a qualitative variable, um, like maybe a professor is superior, good, average, poor, or inferior, right? So you have those five categories of rankings. Um, and, you know, all the students in the class, they could select from superior all the way down to inferior, which attribute they would give, which label, right, they would give to that professor. Um, but there's no way to determine the magnitude of the difference between a superior versus a good. Right? Is that a 10% difference? Is it a 20% difference? Um, we don't really have a way to measure that. So some other, another example might be the top 10 states for the best business climate. Right? Um, but again, there's no way to know then the difference between whatever state ranks at number one and, and the state that ranks at number two. So here again for ordinal, important to note, variables can only be ranked and counted. But then we move to the interval level. Now it has all the characteristics of ordinal, so they can be ranked and counted. Um, but now the differences between our values have meaning. There is no natural point zero, however. So a really good example, I think, of interval level measurement is temperature. Um, because temperatures can be ranked, and the difference between the values has meaning to us, right? Like, I don't know about you, but I understand uh, the meaning of the difference between a day where it's 100 degrees and a day where it's 70 degrees. Um, but it's important to note that a zero here in terms of temperature does not represent the absence of the condition. Um, a zero just means it's really, really cold. Okay, um, And so that's what the point means by there's no natural zero point here. Um, the same thing for like dress sizes as another example. And then finally, we move to our highest level of measurement, which is called ratio. So it has all the characteristics of it, all the other levels below. But now what we're adding on is that the zero point represents the absence of the characteristic. And so this is the category that almost all of our quantitative variables fall into. Um, almost all of them we can measure at the ratio level. And so there is a zero point and the ratios between the two numbers is meaningful. Um, money is a really good example of a ratio level measurement. If you have no money, you have zero dollars. Um, if you have a wage of $50 per hour, that's twice as much as a wage of $25 per hour. So again, there's that meaning between the differences. Um, stock prices, uh, individuals' weights, those would also be examples here. All right, so that this last chart is just summarizing those different levels of measurement. Again, be sure to look more carefully through the chapter and then work on your assignments. Let me know if you have any questions.